And I needed you to know why I came by. Yeah, I need you to tell us why. People know I don't go everywhere. I'm not interested in talking to people unless it's like a Larry King or somebody of an amazing ilk that I would actually want to go talk. You made a safe place for the truth to be told. You know what I mean? Thank you. I appreciate it. Now, if he's willing to pay that price, uh -huh. there's a price to be paid for greatness. There's a price to be paid for success. And if you're not willing to pay that price, you don't deserve to be successful. Right. You don't deserve to be great. He Now, he says, he he told me, and, and, and my guy, Jordan, is over there. He said, now, they're going to come for you. I said, can't come for me for what? I didn't say anything. Right. Cat Williams has come to Shannon Sharp's defense after Sharp faced backlash and cancellation. Sharp, renowned for his bold and provocative commentary, became embroiled in controversy due to a series of comments and actions that sparked a social media uproar. The controversy centers around a heated exchange during a live broadcast where Sharp's remarks were deemed offensive by many, resulting in widespread calls for his cancellation. Let's take a deeper dive into this controversy. But first, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for the latest updates on your favorite celebrities. When you did that interview with Kat, I could respect how you do it. Because Kat said, you let them people lie in your face. And your response was, Kat, I don't know if they're lying or not. Right. Because I can only take them at their word. Yeah. I'm, te I'm telling you this, and I want you, to, and I want somebody to send it to you. And y'all been, I've been seeing it in the chat. Y'all yeah. know who I'm talking about. I don't know who you're talking about, Say but I'm with you. I'm a Say my name again, and I'm gonna put the I'm gonna, and I'm gonna release the DM. Genius of Cat Williams is up by the time you realize he's also talking about you, Shannon. It's too late. I didn't want to get with a white woman because I was scared she might have me running down the street like Jonathan. Be careful, Not because I didn't like white women. I think white women are as great as any other women. I didn't know it was gonna cause this kind of ripple. Um, I didn't think it was gonna move me in the direction i'm glad it did being a celebrity often brings significant challenges which shannon sharp is now experiencing firsthand the industry's toxicity a reality cat williams warned about a few months ago is becoming increasingly evident for him despite the impressive traction shannon's podcast club shay shay has gained especially following cat's interview his recent success hasn't been universally embraced in the industry in a recent interview shannon voiced his frustration over attempts by numerous celebrities to cancel his show and undermine his success. These efforts have escalated to threats, and many guests who were once eager to appear on his show have suddenly canceled without explanation. I'm like, you think so? He's like, Shannon. And, he, and he's looking at me just like I'm looking at you, Cam. He's like, Shannon, this is, this is going to be viral for the whole year. I said, come on, man. In a surprising move, Cat Williams took to social media to publicly support Shannon Sharp. Known for his history of controversial statements and fearless comedy, Williams defended Sharp's right to express his opinions without fear of cancellation. And that's uh, why it resonates. And the reason I had to come is because you made a safe place for the truth to be told. You know what I mean? Thank you, I appreciate And that. I have watched all of these low-brow comedians come here and disrespect you in your face <laughs> and tell you straight-up lies. <laughs> I'm talking about things that have never been heard in all of Black Hollywood. He underscored the importance of free speech and a society that embraces diverse viewpoints, even when they are unpopular or contentious. Williams argued that canceling Sharp over his comments sets a dangerous precedent that undermines open and honest discourse. His defense of Sharp received widespread support from both his followers and Sharp's fans. Many praise Williams for standing up against cancel culture and advocating for constructive dialogue rather than divisiveness. His posts were flooded with messages of agreement and solidarity. We were always aware of the industry's toxicity, but the current situation with Shannon is escalating to new heights. Rumors are swirling that Shannon's life could be at risk due to the mounting hostility, Williams remarked. Product here, and as a fan base, we love the attention that you spend on the guests. We, we love how much work you've done, how well you know them, how prepared you are. The same things that we liked about you in football. <laughs> you brought that on over to here. In a recent interview, Shannon Sharp discussed the unsettling challenges he's faced since his viral interview with Cat Williams earlier this year. Speaking with Cam Newton, he elaborated on why celebrities feel comfortable sharing their stories on his podcast. Shannon explained that before each interview, he asked 
asks his guests if there are any topics they'd prefer to avoid, aiming to create a comfortable environment where they can genuinely express themselves. He emphasized that he has never claimed to be a journalist and does not identify as one. For those who may not be familiar, Shannon Sharp is a highly accomplished former NFL player, inducted to the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 2011. After his distinguished football career, he transitioned to broadcasting, serving as a commentator on CBS Sports' pregame show, The NFL Today, which featured segments like the Sprint Halftime Report and the Subway Postgame Show. In 2013, Shannon broadened his reach by becoming a columnist and spokesperson for Fitness Rx for Men magazine, even gracing its cover. Later in 2016, he joined forces with Skip Bayless on FS1 Sports Debate Show, Skip and Shannon Undisputed. Shannon Sharp didn't dive into podcasting merely to follow a trend. He was already well-established in the industry. Alongside hosting Club Shay Shay, he co-hosts another podcast, Nightcap, with retired NFL player Chad Ochasino Johnson. However, Club Shay Shay stands out for its popularity, driven by several viral interviews with notable figures such as Cat Williams and Steve Harvey. Notably, the 2021 episode featuring Bubba Wallace received special recognition from Apple Podcasts' editorial team, highlighting its significance. Shannon Sharp's journey showcases his resilience and talent for captivating his audience despite industry challenges and adversity. In 2020, amid the pandemic, Shannon Sharp launched Club Shay Shay, discovering a new passion for podcasting after retiring from professional sports. His goal was to create a platform where black entertainers could share their stories candidly, free from harsh judgment. As Shannon puts it, he views himself as a conversationalist rather than a journalist. Despite his extensive media experience, Shannon was surprised by the podcast's overwhelming success in 2024, a success largely attributed to Cat Williams. After a year of trying to book Cat, Shannon finally got his chance when he met Cat's new manager by chance, who facilitated the connection. A week later, Cat was revealing industry secrets on Club Shay Shay. Initially, Shannon Sharp didn't expect the episode with Cat Williams to go viral. Up until that point, his most watched YouTube episode had been with Steve Harvey, which garnered around 8 million views. However, after the session with Cat, Shannon's producer anticipated a major breakthrough. Shannon himself thought the episode might at best surpass the Steve Harvey one, reaching about 10 million views. To his surprise, it far exceeded those expectations. The Cat Williams episode highlights Shannon's talent for engaging with audiences, even amidst industry challenges and controversy. Steve Harvey is my biggest viewed, uh, is my most viewed podcast. He's an 8 million. I said, you think we're going to beat Steve? He's like, yeah, I'm hoping for 10 million. Yeah. That's all, Cam, if I get 10 million, I'm like, that's a pretty good interview. Yeah. Think about how, how few people that's in this space that interview people that don't get 10 million. Sure. So if I get 10 million, that's one of the biggest podcasts. Now, that's not Joe Rogan's numbers, but that's pretty good for up-and-coming podcasts. Cat Williams made headlines by accusing Kevin Hart of being an industry plant. He started by challenging Kevin's portrayal of his East Coast roots, arguing that it seemed unlikely for Kevin to build his career on the East Coast and then rapidly achieve major recognition in L.A. Cat expressed skepticism about Kevin Swift's ascent in the industry, noting how he seemed to appear out of nowhere, securing major roles and TV gigs that typically take years years for comedians to land. Cat suggested that Kevin's success was due to questionable practices, implying that he was an industry plant. He also accused Kevin of becoming a gatekeeper, facilitating the rise of other supposed industry plants, such as Tiffany Haddish. That part. Kevin told you he wouldn't go wear no dress until they offered him the dress, and then he put it on. And what did he say after he wore it? I made my own decision. Duh. But you didn't make it before they brought it up, did you? It's okay. Okay. Cat Williams' harsh critique of Kevin Hart was hardly surprising, given their long-standing feud. In a previous interview, Cat had voiced his disapproval of Kevin's decision to wear a dress on screen, suggesting that such betrayals of straight black men were part of a deliberate agenda by industry gatekeepers to undermine black masculinity. Cat also highlighted a troubling pattern. Whenever he speaks out, the industry responds by attacking his credibility and painting him as unstable. Now, Shannon Sharp seems to be facing similar backlash. Earlier this year during Cat's appearance on Sharp's podcast, he warned Shannon about the potential risks of turning Club Shay Shay into a platform for truth-telling. Kevin Hart mm -hmm. uh, wearing a dress in the SNL skit. And Dave Chappelle spoke about that as a comedian. Black actors are always, you know, being asked to wear dresses. Have you ran into that? And what do you think about that whole Illuminati theory that people could put out there about that? It's two answers. First of all, let's be very, very clear. It is possible that there isn't anything funnier than a guy in a dress. 
And if that's the case, then it might also be said that there's nothing funnier than a black guy in a dress. Okay, well, I watched all of my friends throughout my entire life be able to dunk a basketball, but not me. So everybody can't do everything. So, you know, some of us make choices. I think it's not a biggest choice um, for others. He was unprepared for the scale of backlash he encountered. Once enthusiastic about attending his show, guests are now retracting their invitations. Shannon is facing criticism over his interviewing approach, receiving a flood of negative comments and attempts to silence him. Take, for instance, D.L. Hughley. Despite Kat's respectful demeanor during their Club Shay Shay interview, Hughley took severe offense to Kat's comments about fellow comedians. This unexpected animosity raises eyebrows, especially since there had been no known discord between Shannon and Hughley. It appears Appears that Hughley's frustration might stem from the attention Shannon and Kat garnered, leading him to try and undermine their success. Yet Hughley isn't the only one. Steve Harvey, who had previously been a guest on Club Shay Shay for a popular interview that spanned various topics, is also rumored to be involved in attempts to hinder Shannon's career. The same Steve that went to go watch Mark Curry do his whole sitcom and then stole everything Mark Curry had. Now Steve got a sitcom where he the principal and he wear a suit. And he, and then he gets this high top fade, making all black men think he got the best lineup in the business. When Cat Williams appeared on Club Shay Shay, his interview caused a big boost in viewership, making it the most watched video of the podcast. During the talk, Cat accused Steve Harvey of stealing his story about financial struggles and living in a car. This wasn't the first time Cat criticized Steve. He had previously said Steve spread harmful stereotypes about African American men and tried to force Cedric the Entertainer to wear feminine clothes. Cat believed this was part of a larger Hollywood scheme to undermine black men. He thought Steve mocked Cedric because he felt threatened by Cedric's potential. To avoid looking bad, Steve appeared on Jamie Foxx's satellite radio show on New Year's Eve, claiming he would rise above the drama and not engage in a petty feud. He shared a saying from his grandfather, Dogs don't bark at parked cars, only at moving ones. Dogs bark at the moon all the time, but if the moon barks back, the dog becomes famous. You could have just said, no, I'm not going to do it. You have been the king of comedy as long as we've had one. Matter of fact, the whole phrase, king of comedy, can be attributed to you. And I am honored that you would allow me to share the same stage as you. Cat's remarks only made it clearer that he thought Steve couldn't compete with him in a comedy fight. But the tension seemed to cool as both went on with their careers. The conflict flared up again when Cat spoke out in an interview, which seemed to upset Steve. Steve talked a lot on his radio show, clearly referring to Cat and Shannon without naming them. The drama didn't stop there. Reports say Steve is trying to convince other celebrities not to go on Club Shay Shay, and he isn't the only one. Oprah Winfrey is also said to have a problem with Shannon Sharp. Her issue started when Shannon had Monique on his podcast. Monique used the opportunity to criticize Oprah, calling her a narcissistic manipulator. Monique also claimed that Oprah and Tyler Perry mistreated her and hurt her career because she didn't agree to some terms not included in her contract. And I want to let you know that I, I, I would never do nothing to hurt you, but the conversation kept going on. Only for Tyler Perry to admit he did start a rumor that I was difficult to work with. He lied. Only for Tyler Perry to admit I was wrong and when my movie Boo come out, I'm gonna say that. Monique and Oprah have been feuding for a long time. It all began when Monique worked with Oprah on the movie Precious. Monique refused to join an unpaid, unscheduled press tour, which reportedly upset Oprah. Oprah then allegedly spread rumors that Monique was hard to work with. Both sides were unhappy with the situation. Shannon has also faced his share of controversies. Although Club Shay Shay usually features upbeat interviews where guests have a good time, some episodes have received criticism. For example, Shannon was recently criticized after his interview with Amanda Seals. During the interview, Amanda talked about living with autism and the difficulties she faced, especially as a black girl in America. At the start of the interview, Shannon seemed confrontational. When Amanda mentioned her mother noticing symptoms of autism and how her mind worked differently, Shannon appeared to question her, suggesting she might be exaggerating. Just because you have a special gift, that doesn't mean that, you know, you have a spectrum or you have a... Uh, just because you see things differently, it doesn't mean that you're on the spectrum or you... This isn't related to simply how I see things. This is related to how my brain functions. Yes. But just because your brain, just because your brain functions differently from, say, mine. Yes. So you feel just because your brain functions differently that that's what caused it? Or there's a clinical diagnosis that well, some... There are clinical diagnoses. For you. 
Yes, there are clinical diagnoses for autism. Yes. Yeah, well, I know. When you when you take the tests, I you know. see. When you take the tests, you're like. Amanda also shared a story about correcting a teacher who she felt made a historical mistake. As the only black student in the class, she saw the teacher's reaction as racist, which led to a parent-teacher meeting that she thought was unfair. Shannon disagreed, saying that in his experience, students didn't correct their teachers, and that the teacher's response might have been more about feeling disrespected than about racism. While both views seemed reasonable, the interview continued smoothly after this tense moment. Later, fans criticized Shannon for being dismissive. The issue with Shannon and his podcast highlights the difficulties of handling media and public opinion, especially when dealing with sensitive subjects and well-known guests. Amanda pointed out that Shannon seemed judgmental, despite his claim that his podcast is a non-judgmental space. She suggested that although Shannon is likable, he might be better suited for lighter comedic interviews and should focus more on listening rather than pushing his own views. Some people agreed with Shannon, like one commenter who said, Shannon's right. I remember being a kid and being told speak when I was spoken to and come when called. We weren't allowed to correct adults or we would have been punished. However, most people did not support Shannon. In a recent interview with Cam Newton, Shannon said he could accept criticism if this was the only interview fans had a problem with out of all the ones on his channel. What's surprising is how many people are targeting Shannon. This negativity seems to have started before the Cat Williams interview. Last May, TMZ Sports reported that Shannon's Los Angeles home was broken into while he was out with friends for dinner. The thieves stole watches, jewelry, and designer bags worth about $1 million. Shannon later offered a $50,000 reward for information leading to the thief's arrest, but no good leads have come up. At first, this seemed like an unrelated incident. However, after the interview, rumors began suggesting that the robbery might have been a failed attempt to get Shannon, turning into a theft when the burglars found he wasn't home. It might sound like a far-fetched theory, but Shannon wouldn't be the first person to face industry blacklisting from gatekeepers who don't like them. Many fans are confused about why Shannon is being targeted, especially since he just provides a platform for black celebrities. Even with Cat's support, Shannon seems quite upset because his viral interview with Cat Williams has caused a lot of drama. Allowing guests to share sensational stories about well-known figures will attract a big audience, but it also comes with risks. Shannon must have known there would be consequences. Shannon Sharp recently talked about the trouble he's faced since his viral interview with Cat Williams earlier this year. Cam asked Shannon how he stays neutral when guests make controversial comments or wild claims about other celebrities who have been on his show. Shannon explained that he lets his guests speak freely without checking every detail they mention. He also discussed the issue between Cat Williams and Ricky Smiley, saying it's not his job to monitor what guests say and that he trusts that they are telling the truth. Shannon mentioned that Cat had proof for his claims and said he prefers to let guests talk without pushing back too much. Cat, and I look at my producer and he's shaking his head. I'm like, oh man, we done messed up. So I'm like, what did I say? Yeah. Did I say something? He like, this is gonna be the talk of 24. No way. I'm like, you think so? He's like, Shannon. And, he, and he's looking at me just like I'm looking at you, Cam. He's like, Shannon, this is, this is gonna be viral. Shannon went on to explain how his interview with Kat greatly boosted his podcast's popularity. Kat had predicted that the interview would be a game changer for Shannon's show, but he also warned that powerful figures in the industry would strike back for giving Kat a platform to reveal their secrets. Shannon confirmed that this has happened. He is thankful for the huge boost in popularity from Kat's revealing comments, but he is also facing significant fallout, just as Kat predicted. It seems some industry insiders are upset with Shannon for laughing at Kat's jokes and are trying to undermine his podcast as revenge. Shannon admitted he understood there could be consequences for having Cat on his show, but he was surprised by the extent of the backlash and negativity. And then he said some stuff that we haven't heard in 100 years in Hollywood. You ain't say nothing. This man told you he had Cat Williams' role. He was gonna be Money Mike. Wait. And Cat Williams was gonna, be fr was gonna be the Santa Claus. Shannon claimed that the recent rumors about him allegedly being on the down low started because of having Cat Williams on his show. He believes that some people in the industry are spreading these rumors to damage his reputation and discredit his podcast. Apart from Shannon, let's look at the industry figures who supposedly wanted revenge for giving Cat a platform. Several people publicly criticized Shannon, saying he was putting down other black people for views. One prominent critic was Steve Harvey. At first, Steve said he wouldn't comment on what Cat said about him on Club Shay Shay and focused on staying positive, but he also posted a video on X with advice.
advice from Family Feud about ignoring hate, captioning it, you don't have to address your haters. It looks like Kat really got to Steve, and Steve couldn't resist addressing the drama. He chose to talk about it on a pre-recorded episode of the Steve Harvey radio show and didn't hold back. Steve suggested that Kat might just be a big liar. He warned listeners to be careful when someone presents something as the truth, as even smooth talkers can deceive you. Steve noted that some people lie so convincingly, mixing in just enough truth that it's easy to believe their lies. But that wasn't all. At Steve's recent Golf Classics event, he again talked about Cat Williams and the Club Shay Shay interview. Steve bluntly said that Cat ain't crap and that he would be happy to take him down. After Monique's dramatic appearance, D.L. Hughley had a lot to say about Club Shay Shay. Soon after Hughley went live on Instagram to criticize Shannon Sharp for being messy, in response, Shannon said he wasn't spreading gossip but just letting his guests speak freely. Then Dave Chappelle joined the conversation. Even though Cat didn't say anything bad about Chappelle on Club Shay Shay, Dave criticized Cat, accusing him of only targeting black comedians. Fans quickly pushed back against Dave, reminding him that Cat had clearly stated this wasn't about targeting anyone. They pointed out that Cat had warned about the potential negative reactions to his interview. Fans are unsure how to feel about Shannon's comments, with many saying there's no way he didn't expect what was going to happen. They think Shannon should have handled it as if these were Cat's views, not his own. Fans understand that Shannon was just letting Cat speak, but people with big egos like Steve Harvey would only see Shannon laughing and having a good time. Well, this might seem petty, that's how some people react. Fans don't think Shannon needed to be fake, but they believe that he should have anticipated this kind of backlash. Some fans criticize Shannon, accusing him of being hypocritical for not challenging Kat's claims, even though he seemed to have a different attitude towards him. Shannon's interviewing style got mixed reviews, with some viewers finding it too confrontational. While differing opinions shouldn't necessarily be linked to neurodiversity or unrelated issues, this situation shows the ongoing tension between free speech and accountability. Free speech advocates like Cat Williams argue for the right to share different opinions, while others emphasize the need to hold public figures responsible for harmful statements. The situation with Sharp and Williams highlights the bigger discussion about cancel culture and its effects on public conversations. It raises questions about where to draw the line between holding people accountable and allowing different viewpoints. In the end, Cat Williams defending Shannon Sharp during his cancellation controversy shows how tricky it is to balance free speech with accountability to Today. As debates about cancel culture go on, this incident reminds us of the need for balanced discussions and the difficulties of reconciling different opinions in a divided world. But what do you think about all this? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for today. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more content like this.